Thanks so much for joining us today. We would love to know how God is using this ministry to touch your life. Please take a moment to send your story to marathonchurch.org slash mystory. Also, if you would like to support this ministry financially, you can do so by visiting marathonchurch.org and choosing the giving option that works best for you. Thanks again for joining us and we hope you enjoy today's message. Call this the Thanksgiving hangover. That's kind of it feels like. Like I ate so much. Y'all eat enough? Did everybody get all they wanted? I got more than I wanted, and it just keeps coming. You know what I'm saying? It's still in the refrigerator. I just keep warming that thing up, just going at it, loving it. Well, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Um, I had a good one. Okay. Now that's you know it's hit and miss with y'all, isn't it? You know it's, it's like a 50-50 if I'm going to have a good Thanksgiving or not because you got other things involved. You got other people coming to your house. And your family's showing up. And your family might be here. We're glad you're here, by the way. Even though they may have said other things about that, we're really glad that you're here. Thank you for coming, Tom. <laughs> Snuck in out of the tree stand. Let me just say something while we're eating. Let's, if you go send me a picture of some deer, they need to be deer in the picture. Compl- is, that, is that not? Okay, look at these two deer. And I'm like, there's no deer. And when you get to a certain age, though, you see things. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> So I'm sure you shot a deer. Yeah, I'm sure you did, kind of thing. Hey, uh, fireplace update. Does anybody want to know? Does anybody really? Y'all care about this, right? Okay. Y'all yeah, like this. It's good. Y'all to be me trying to finish it, okay? I am 10 square feet away from finishing this thing. It'll be done by Tuesday. Praise the Lord. I got a mantle. You know, when you order it, you get a mantle, okay? I, you're supposed to ask how much it weighs. Okay, that was a that was a mistake. So now I have, you know. So anyway, it's supposed to be forty pounds. I'll let you know. Okay, I'm gonna have my wife put it up there. <laughs> the husband that I am. Well, that, well, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving, and I hope things are going well. You know, and one of the things that has to happen, and I think for us, the life that we're talking about, the life you always wanted. One of the things has to happen. You're gonna have to plan for good things. Okay, you're going to have to plan. We're going to talk about this. It's one of the things that Brian was talking about. We're going to talk about being good to you, good to others, and good for the kingdom. What happens to most Christians and what I have seen is that we kind of just sit back hoping. We do this hoping and praying, and the Bible tells us to do all that, okay? But we never do anything that's of good. We never schedule the good. We never do the good. So when I say, you had a, did you have a good Thanksgiving, how do you know this? Okay, how do you know this? What did you do that was good? Now, you may have did some good things by default. You know what I'm saying? You're like, you had to cook. This isn't normal practice for you, okay? This is what I'm talking about as a Christian. Normal practice for us is to do good stuff. Because if we don't do the good, the kingdom of God can't move and other people can't find Jesus, that kind of thing. So what I'm asking you is that I, I would think right now most of you did pretty good this, this last week, right? Either you had them at your house you either cooked or you brought something. You did something that wasn't normal, okay? I hate to say it that way. But so you, most of you were good. Does that make sense? Most of you did good. So we're going to talk about this as we walk through this, even with the Lord's Supper. One thing you have to understand that nothing good happens on its own. We get that. And I need you to make sure you understand that because as we walk into next year, we're going to plan the good, we're going to schedule the good. We're going to do the good. This is the way that the kingdom moves. Because I think you might hear this. You might hear, uh, Marathon, we're going to reach the community. We're going to go out. And it's like you're not like, like it's a they are going to do that. 
You know, now I'm talking about you're going to do that. You're going to schedule that if you want to do that. If you want to have a good life, you want to have the life you've always wanted, then you're going to have to schedule this stuff. You say, it's just the way it works. This is the way God always works. God doesn't do anything out of random. He doesn't wake up and say, well, let's see here. Who can I bless today? I mean, it's just amazing to me how we think as Christians and how we feel our way into decisions. And we're just hoping and praying things are going to work out and hoping something good is going to happen to us. If something good happens to you, it's because of somebody else. Because that's how it's set up. God brings good through you. and God brings good through people. So that's what you have to think about. So if nothing good happens on its own, and let's make sure we understand that, this is not, you know where you live, right? Does everybody know where you are? You're on earth. This isn't heaven. Have y'all figured out this isn't heaven? Okay. It's, you know, school starts back tomorrow, right? I got that right? There will be no heaven tomorrow. Okay, just letting you know, okay? But I'm just telling you that we don't live in heaven, live on earth, so good things aren't normally going to take place without somebody doing it. You get, are you catching this? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Because most of your Christian thoughts are going to be, I want to be good. You want to just be good. You don't want to do good. We've got to think about that for a minute. And so we want to have a great life, but we don't do anything to have a great life. And is it possible to have, have a good life in the middle of misery? Well, sure. Things aren't going to work out like you think they're going to work out. How does Thanksgiving work out okay? This is what I'm saying. You know, there's some things we can't control, but I still can have a good life in the middle of the misery. The Bible talks about this all the time. It's because of the doing of the good, not waiting for the good. And this is something that we're going to have to talk about as we walk through this. Now, there's a blind spot with this. Let's think about this just for a minute. There's a blind spot with the good. Because a lot of times we want to sit back and wait for God to do something. I get that. And we want God's will in our life. I get that. I hear that all the time. Uh, so we just sit and we hope and we wait. Maybe the ship will come in one day. You remember that? Maybe my spouse will act like they're supposed to one day. Maybe all that will work out. Maybe they'll do what I tell them to do. No, no, no. Maybe your kids are growing up to be great. 50-50. 50-50 on the children. Okay, 50-50 with you. How are you doing? You know, I'm glad you made it, by the way. At least you did one good thing so far. You're here. Okay. So you're here, so that's a good thing. So what I'm asking you is that who's, who's, getting, who's giving the good and who's getting the good right now? This is what we got to think about as we walk into this. So we can't live a life if something's going to happen, if this takes place, if they behave, if they do. <laughs> My goodness, we're never going to have a life. We never will. And I'm not going to allow that to happen. If I can help you, if you will listen, if you will listen, as we walk through these series, as we walk into next year, I'm going to try to give you a life and show you how to have a life that the Bible talks about. You're not going to have to guess about it. You're not going to have to just hope about it. You're going to get to have the life you're looking for. In the middle of things and bad things happening in your life, you still will have a good life if you listen to the Scripture. And it's very hard. I think some of us think that you know, having a good life means nothing bad is going to happen. That's not it at all. That's where we mess up most of all, is that we think because I'm a Christian, nothing bad is going to happen. Listen, conflict moves the kingdom of God. People don't do anything unless there, there's a reason to do it. Whether it be I'm sick, whether I hurt, or whether this, or whether it be that. All of you are sitting in the same place. You usually sit. Correct? I get it. If something bad happens right there, though, if somebody hugs you you didn't want to be hugged by, Okay, or we try to hold hands with you and you don't want to hold hands. You will move next week. That's how it works. So it isn't that I'm going to have a good life and everything's going to work out for me. And I'm not going to have anything bad happen in my life. And we try to go through life trying to hope, I hope nothing goes wrong. Listen, you don't live in that place. You need to figure out you better hope something goes good. And you're going to be the one to bring the good. You're going to have to think about that. Now let's look at the verse. Let's do this. Let's go over here. Now, understand about faith, okay? Understand about faith. You have the good. And this is what he's talking about. He said, but someone will say, you have faith. You have the good. You know what I'm talking about. He's what he's saying. You know what I'm talking about. You have faith and have works. And I have works. He's saying, 
You have good, I do the good. This is a different concept. This is a different concept and called, because Jesus Christ brought this into our life. And you'll get to be a part of that as we do the Lord's Supper. Because this was brought in and changed. And you will see this as we go there. And I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. You, you say you have good. I'll show you my good. Do I do it? Listen. So Jesus Christ. Let's talk about this just for a moment. You want to do this? Jesus Christ comes into this world. And he, he lives and he dies. And he's crucified and takes some of the sin in the world. So that you can just be good. And that, listen, can I say this? I'm probably going to say it anyway because there's nothing you can do about it. Okay? Most of you never get out of the childlike faith. Most of you never grow up spiritually. I tell the children to be good. You see how that works? When you become an adult, you do the good. You have the resources to do the good. You should have the time. You know how to schedule. You should think beyond a child. And most adults are still trying to be good and not to do the good. And this is where, you, this is where am I going to have the life I wanted or a life I, I don't want? Which one is that? And, you, and I've heard people say it all the time. You know, I'm just, I've been good. I go to church. I read the Bible. What does that mean? He says, this is what this means. You say you have good. You say you have faith. I'll show you what I do. Because it isn't about just being good, it's about doing good. This is what Jesus tried to tell us over and over. He has given it to us to move the kingdom. It isn't so much, am I going to have a great life? I have not got everything I wanted. How about you? You got everything you wanted? Everything happy? My fireplace isn't finished yet. I'm not there. I am not happy. You know, and I probably won't do this again. Okay? You know, you have to do these things one time in your life. Okay, we just can't do a little one. We got to do a big one. We got to put levels on it. I got to have dust in my face. And anyway, I'm just not going to go there. But you have to, you know, we're here to move something and move the kingdom. And that's, that's how it works. Our temptation is just to wait, on, to wait and see what happens. So if I, so let me say this. So what, are we, what good are we going to do next week? That's what we got to talk about. Because when we don't do the good stuff, and we don't do the good he's talking about. Things are going to happen to you that you don't want. And it's not just bad circumstances. It's just not everybody's gonna, everything's going to work out. So when we get to this God thinking, we got, let's think about that for a minute. I have to, you know, we talk about renewing our mind and that kind of thing. We need to start thinking like God. How does this thing work? If it's beyond just being good, if it's beyond just reading the scripture and praying and showing up to something... Is it beyond that? We've got to think like God. It's about moving the kingdom through us, and we have to be the ones to do the good and not just be good. And this is something we have to think about. And so one of the things that I always say to people, don't cave in. Because life's going to get to the point where you're going to cave in. You're going to, and you're going to, you're going to regress. You're going to retreat. You're going to pull back. And you're just going to be misery, miserable after misery and all the stuff that happens with that. And this happened in the Bible, and there's three things. I'm going to read something to you in just a moment. There's three things I don't want to happen to you. Is that cool? If, I could, if we could avoid this, okay, if we could avoid this, this is something that we need to avoid. And this happened to David, and it happened. It's, it is amazing how all this happens in the Bible. It's nothing new under the sun, but you think it is. You think it is. Let me read this to you. This is crazy stuff. Okay, and you know, let me help you real quick. David was always running from Saul and always running for somebody. He was always trying to find the next cave to hide in. Everybody got that? There are actually four caves in the Bible. I'm going to give you one. We'll talk about the rest of the caves as we go through. But there were four caves, but this happened to be the one. This is, this is the cave that you probably are in. Okay, let me read this. Uh, David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Is that close enough? Is that good enough? Pronunciation? Okay, Adulin. All those, watch this, all those who were distressed and in debt and, dis and discontented, okay, all right, gathered around him. How would you like to be in this cave? G 
gathered around him, and, became, and he became their commander. Oh, my goodness. Okay. About 400 men were with him. Does this sound like a Baptist church? I didn't say our church, right? I mean, you know, not y'all. Y'all not this, are you? Is this what I got? Let's just, uh, look, look. We, listen, we don't even care about that next service. Let's just talk about us, okay? Is this what we got here? Are, are we, like, uh, distressed or in debt and we're discontented? This is the American dream right there. Is that not? These, this is something we, can I say, you don't have to be this. It doesn't have to turn out this way. These are the people that David was going to lead. We're going into battle. Really? Can you imagine the comfort and the, the, the enthusiasm these people had? Well, the reason they were, am I still there? Okay, the reason they were there is they wanted something different. This isn't working, so I got to do something different. Let's call this the three Ds. You want to do that? Let's call this the three Ds. Let's call it distressed, debt, and discontented. Now, let me help you real quick. Okay, distressed is not stress. When, when I have a 12-year-old tell me they're stressed out, really, what are, we, what are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, your iPod didn't work right? You know what I'm talking about? Do you not hear this from the kids? Where do the kids get that? From you. Are you so you say, I'm, just, I'm stressed out. Well, that's because you're probably doing so much stuff you shouldn't be doing to begin with. That's why you're stressed. That's usually what happens. That's not distressed. This right here is that I am physically ill over what's going on in my life. This is, this, is, this is beyond stress. This is going to take my life. This is going to kill me if I don't do something different. I'm looking for something different. Because if I don't do it, I'm going to die. This is what was in that cave. So, I don't, so there, there's a cure for these three things, but let's talk about distress, debt. How about that one? Now, some of you, do you owe too much money or do you owe too many people? Or should the Bible say you should have the owe the debt of love? So which one is it? So let's think about that for a minute. Are y'all in debt to people who... You know, this is why we have Thanksgiving, by the way. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to say that. We're so glad, so thankful for you. You know, and it's 3 o'clock. Would you please just go on now? It's a football game. Really do love you, though. You know, But I'm saying a lot of us get this way, and this is what's happening with them. This is physically, I can't keep doing this. I'm so in debt. The Bible says don't be in debt. With, we think about money and that kind of thing. You should owe love to other people. You should be a part of the good. These things can change. And discontented. We'll ne we're never happy with what we have. We always want something more. How many went out, you don't have to raise your hand. How many went out Black Friday and bought stuff you really didn't need? Is that pretty good? Just because it was there. My daughter said, let's go out Black Friday. You know, I'm older now. And I'm smarter than that. I said, no, we can order it online. Same deal. Bring it to your house. Why would you get out of the car? Does that not make sense to you? They're going to get, is it Cyber Monday, Monday tomorrow? Don't even have to leave the house. Drinking my coffee. Ordering Christmas presents. I love it. UPS loves me. But I'm seeing a lot of us, we are discontented. We are not happy with what we have. And these men were saying, I don't like my life. I'm in debt and I want something new. Because the way that I'm living life can't be this. It's got to change. That's what he was, they were saying to, the, to him. This has to change. And then one of the things that you know that you got to be careful of that these are, we call this the good thief. Now, let me ask you this. How did we all get into this place? You ever thought about that? It, 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 you know, did it just sneak up on you? You're, it's just like, I'm distressed and I don't know how I got here. You know, and I'm in debt. Boy, debt's really weird, isn't it? You can get in debt, I mean, like now. I think we just did. And then, but we can never get out of it. It's so easy. How did they stay? How do we accumulate these things? And you look around your house. I don't really remember why I bought that, or where this is. That kind of thing. And we, you know, and now we're not happy with anything. We have all these things and all this stuff, and we're not even happy. We don't even like our life. So we cave in, and we stay. 
We never get out. We never do the good. All of this changes when you do good. All of it changes. Because most of you don't have a reason. This is what happens to most of us. We don't have a reason. Why are we, why are we here? Why are we living? What is the purpose of this whole thing? It's to move the kingdom. And that's one of the things that you've got to be careful. The natural response is, this is listen, we're naturally going to have these things happen because we live in this. We're not to live naturally, unnatural is what the Bible tells us. We're not of this world. We're not a part of this world. We're moving on to something else. Don't live like everybody else. Do something different. And part of that is going to be the good. That's something you're going to have to think. How, do, how, how am I going to do good this week? What am I going to do? How do I schedule that in? I schedule it in, and let me say this real quick, not because I'm a pastor, because I think you think I'm supposed to be good. Well, I am. I'm, you know, part, I'm mostly good, you know. I'm like you. You know, some days I have days I like. I just want to kill everybody, just like you do. I just want to hurt that person. Just give me five minutes with them. Just five, just five. I am exactly like you. I am like you. So you have to think about that. So if I say to you, I'm going to schedule the good, then I mean I'm going to do good this week. Somebody's going to get blessed this week. I'm going to do good to somebody for somebody. So you like, you want to hang with me because I'm going to buy you something. And that's the way it works. Or I'm going to take you this or I'm going to do that. So it ain't all, always about money. But you got to think like that. So let's look at this. Nothing good happens on its own. So God sent his own. This is... So this, what he was, he wrote, let me tell you what's happening. So when we get to the Lord's Supper, you'll know what's going on. Nothing was going to change. Distressed, debt, discontent, leaving it in our hands, hoping this will work out, was not going to happen. We were not going to be able to get to God. We were not going to be good enough. We couldn't do the good enough. And we're living in a place, we're in this cave, and God says, I'm going to take the first step. I'm going to do the first good. I'm going to send my son, Jesus Christ, for you. And that's what he did. So he sent his own because we were in trouble. We were in trouble. The, the saying is that life's not about you. Y'all heard that one? Is that true or false? True or false, life's not about you. Well, how, how does that look next week if it's not about you? You see what I'm saying? If it's not about you, how does that look next week? What, do, what, does, that, what does that say? Now, if I'll say this. If you want to have something, you give it away. That is an absolute spiritual principle that for some reason we just can't get in our head. You want love, you love. You want good things to happen, do good. You want to have money, give it away. Is this the craziest stuff you ever heard in your life? I'm not making it up. This is exactly what Jesus told us to do. This is said. Now, if you want to have the life you've always wanted, that's how you're going to have to live. That's what he was telling us. But when it comes to us, now let's flip, let's flip it to God. So if I say to you, life's not about you, but if I flip it over to God, he would say life is about you for me. The whole thing was about you, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. The whole thing, bringing Jesus, being born in a manger, crucified, whole deal, taking on the sins of the world, was all about you. He wanted to redeem you. He wanted to love you. He wanted you to be his children. It's very personal to him. You are very personal to him. And sometimes we get in this general thought that God loves the world, right? And that's... God loves the world. God loves mankind. Listen very carefully. When we go to the Lord's Supper, I'm going to show you some phrasing and some language that he used. This is very, very personal to you and to him as we walk into this. It's not just about mankind. It's just not about the world. This is you. This is you. This is one of those times, one of those places where you can actually just, you and God are going to have this conversation you and God are going to have this moment. You don't have to wait to do it here, by the way. You can have the Lord's Supper at home. Have it anywhere. Because it's personal. It doesn't have to be a group thing. This is between you and God. Now, let me see if I can help you real quick. Let's, try not, let's just try to forget everything I said at this moment. Okay? You will anyway by Wednesday. Let's just go ahead and start now. Okay? All right. 
I need you to figure out this in just a moment. We're going to do this, okay? I need you to think about this. You need to understand that this, is, this whole thing was about you. So he wants us to do the Lord's Supper or the communion, whatever you're used to. Because a lot of people, when we first did it, would have the Lord's Supper. And this is truth. People would bring food because they did not understand what we were doing. I was fine with that. I'll just let you know. But they didn't know what this meant. And what this means is that this, this whole thing was about you. It's not about Marathon. It's not about the world right now. Not about all mankind. This is, this is you. And this is why he did it. So that you'll know that. There's a couple of things we're going to do. At the tables we have communion cups. On the top you'll be able to pull it back. It'll be a wafer. And on the bottom it'll be the juice. So that everybody can get one. So as we walk into this we'll get the cups. And then I'll tell you what else is, go what else is going to be personal to you. So let's stand and have a prayer before we move. I know this is Thanksgiving weekend. I know all the stuff that goes with that. And, you know, some of you are sleepy and tired and full. Let's put all that behind us right now. Let's just have a, before Christmas starts, let's, let's, get, let's get with God, okay? Just have this moment. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for what you're about to do. I pray your Holy Spirit will be with us. As we think about you and what you did and in this moment. And we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you would, if you'll go to the tables, and we'll give you time to do that as they sing, and then you can come back to your seat. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are Precious blood of Jesus Christ. Y'all may be seated. Someone said that uh, if you cut the Bible, it would bleed. Blood's in the Bible about 427 times mentioned. And you have to know that it was by the blood of Jesus Christ that we have this opportunity to do this. Now let's make sure you understand... This is so hard for us because we get into the middle of life and that kind of thing. But we are not, this, this is not our home, guys. Okay, let, let's, let's don't forget that. And, and you know, and, and this, this life, misery or no misery or whatever, we're here to move people to the cross. And that's why we're here. But we're, he says, you're just a stranger in this land. You're just an alien. You're just moving through. He said, you know, don't, don't take it so serious. Remember what we're doing. Remember who we are and why we're here. So we realize that the Bible talks about us being as precious stones, you know, that kind of thought, and who we are in Him. But it's really personal to God that we remember what Jesus did and that you can have this in your life and have this spot in your life. So I want to read something. I'm going to put this verse up. Let me show you this. This is really strange language, it's different language. Than all or we or mankind or the world. This is really what he was trying to say right here. He said, in the same way after supper, he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new way of worship. The new way is that you will be able personally talk to God. You will be the child now. You will be redeemed. All things are about to change. May between God and and you not we not us not they you is what he was trying to say by my blood whenever you drink it
do it to remember me whenever you do it. So don't think of this as we are just us. I want you to think of you. Imagine that scene. You had Thanksgiving. Can you imagine this thought? You're coming into your house and everybody's excited. When we got food, it's just like the disciples. You know, they're all excited. I'm hanging out with Jesus and everybody. He's, he's, a, he's like a rock star in their, his day. He can do anything and walk on water, raise the dead. And I'm the guy that's hanging out with him. And they're just high-fiving. You know, it's going good. This is great. And then Jesus says, uh, I'm going away. Huh? What? Uh, I'm going to die. What? No. What? It's just like at your celebration. You sit down at the table and someone at the head of the table says, let me tell you what's going to happen to me. Let me tell you. I'm going to be the one who takes away the sins of the world. Can you imagine this conversation in this room? This isn't what they were thinking. Of course, they, they weren't thinking a whole lot anyway. They were just glad to be around. And he starts telling them, he said, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen to you. And you need to be prepared for that. He said, but this is going to be for you. I'm going to take away your sin. You're going to be my child. You are going to be redeemed. And he said, I'm going to do something, and I don't want you to ever forget that. See, what I think happens to us, I'll be honest with you, I think we forget. I think life gets crazy. We don't get what we want. And we forget who we are. He says, I don't want you to do that. He said, this is why I want you to do this. It's called communion, the Lord's Supper. He said, I want to make sure that everybody knows what they're doing. This is between you and God. He said, I need everybody to make sure they examine themselves before we do this. This is what it says in Corinthians. You need to make sure you understand what you're doing. Check, check the sin in your life. Is there something there? Is there some, something against someone? Those kind of things. You need to be the one to think about this. Wrongs need to be made right. All, that, all those things. He said, but this is for you. This is my blood taking your sin so that you can be my child. And this is about you. So they're in the room. They're having this conversation. I can, I can almost promise you the mood of the room changed completely when he got there, when he started into this conversation. Because right after this, by the way, right after this, he's going to be going to the Garden of Gethsemane. And right after that, he's going to go to the cross and he's going to pay for you. Your salvation. That's what's next. So it's the last time he's going to get to do this. Imagine having Jesus having friends and you think you don't need them. This is what he was doing. So he passed out the bread everyone if you would get the wafer now y'all do understand that this is strange what's happening now they were not prepared for this and this is brand new because we just read about this is the new way of worship this is the new thing that God's about to do and this was all brand new to them so he broke the bread and then he gave a prayer. So let's pray. Father, I pray we will never forget what you did. I don't know why we do. But I want to thank you this weekend, right now, that you gave your life, broke your body for me. And I want to thank you. Thank you for making us your children. Help us never to forget we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. So he looked around the table. Now you do know this, that he knows how everything's going to go, right? So he looks around the table 
and he knows how everybody's going to die. They're all going to run at first, but then they're going to come back. And then everybody, and everybody at the table is going to die. And the reason they're going to die, because that is how the kingdom of God moves. It's because of the blood that was shed, not only from Jesus Christ, but those original people gave their life so that you are in this room. Do y'all know this? So he's looking around the room at all these people and he knows how they're all going to die. But he has to go first. And he looked at all of them. He said, take eat. This is my body. Most important thing was coming. Most important thing. According to what just happened, they just ate the body of Christ. That's how they were seeing this. I don't know how you're seeing it, but that's how they were seeing it. So the room is definitely, has definitely changed. He's told them what's going to happen. He's going to die. He's going to leave. But he's not going to leave them by themselves. He's told them all this stuff. He's been telling them this for, uh, for years. But this was the night. This was when it was going to happen. He told them, he said, without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sin. And they sacrificed and they sacrificed and they sacrificed. And the lamb took took care of the sins of the people over and over. And now there was going to be one last sacrifice. It was going to be Jesus Christ, the Son of God, one last time so that you would have life. Now, do you think they understood any of that? Of course they did not. They didn't get that. All they heard was, you're going to die. You're going to leave me. It was later. It was later. So he gave, he took the cup. And then he gave thanks. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for taking away my sin. For making me worthy to be called your child. I don't want to ever forget this. In the middle of all that happens, Father, and ever how this life goes, I pray I'll never forget who I am. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. They've just eaten the bread. And now they're about to drink the wine. He gave it to them. And here's what he said. Drink from it, all of you. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant. The new worship that you get to be in on. Which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. You know, you can do this anywhere you want to do this. You can do it in a tree, Tom. You can. You know why you can do that? Because this is personal between you and God. It doesn't have to be in a, in a, in a church, but this was you and him. And if, if I could help you in, with anything, is re, just kind of just remember who you are when those tough days come. Remember where you live. This will not be forever. It will not be forever. But there will be a day when Jesus, can, yeah, I always get cold chills when I say this. Can you imagine him doing this? And you're in there and you're sitting there and Jesus Christ said, well, the next time I do this, we're going to be with my father. And then can you imagine this part? That Jesus, we're having communion and Jesus Christ is doing it himself. And you can see the nail prints in his hands. Can you imagine It's hard to have a bad day, huh? You can have the life you've always wanted because Jesus gave it to you. You just got to know how to get to it. And I'm going to help you.